This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Now this is a really interesting recipe that I learned from Massimo Baturo, obviously one of the best chefs in the world. It's another classic recipe from Emilia Romagna and it's a true peasant dish. It's essentially the act of turning breadcrumbs into pasta. A beautiful idea. I didn't know it could be done, but apparently it can be. And that's what we're gonna make today. When I see this dish, it just instantly reminds me of matzo ball soup. It's like an Italian version of matzo ball soup. We're gonna mix some Parmigiano Reggiano and some breadcrumbs in with a little bit of egg, and then we're gonna cook it in brodo, or broth of any kind, stock, whatever you got. And this is a great way to utilize breadcrumbs and old bread in a new, exciting way. But before we jump right into it, let's take a moment to talk about our sponsor today, Skillshare. One thing that always bothered me when I ran my food truck was there were skills that I didn't have, skills I relied on other people for. And ever since that experience, my goal in life has been to acquire more skills. I figured the more skills that I had, the more valuable of a person that would be. And that's why I'm so excited to be partnering with Skillshare today. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for people who are hungry to learn new skills. They have classes on almost every topic, including photography, cooking, creative writing, and even business and entrepreneurship. Right now I'm enjoying Beef 101, a class from New York City's premier butcher, Pat Lafreda. And I'm also taking Italian chef secrets from Nick Anderer, who's another New York City chef and restaurateur. All these classes are curated specifically for learning, meaning there's no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes. And it's all less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. So right now, the first thousand of my subscribers who click in the link down in the description are gonna get a two month free trial of a premium membership so you can start to explore your creativity and develop those new skills. Check out the link in the description when this video is all set. And thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So we've got our unseasoned breadcrumbs, plain breadcrumbs, and that's best for now. You can use the seasoned breadcrumbs, it's just gonna have more of an intense flavor. If that's what you want, then fine. But we need to make these breadcrumbs really fine. And I think the quickest way I'm gonna do it is just by sifting it through one of these. Just like we would flour. I'm not gonna throw these out, I'm gonna put these back in. Those are still good breadcrumbs. So now we have like a nice fine, almost flour, but it's essentially made of bread. It's pretty cool if you ask me. So now, I'm gonna do this by eye. That was about a quart, a little less than a quart container full of breadcrumbs. How much does that weigh? So this is just under a pound of breadcrumbs. And then I got Parmesan cheese. I want the amount of Parmesan cheese to be slightly less than the amount of breadcrumbs. You could probably put more cheese in. That's kind of all the cheese that I have right now, so I'm hoping that's enough. But again, you can sort of feel it out, but I think you just need the proportion to be more breadcrumb than cheese. And I'll mix it up. So now we just wanna add our egg. And I think I'm gonna crack these all into a bowl and then whip them all up and then add maybe two thirds of it to start and see if that's enough and then add the rest and just feel this out. I'll end up adding that whole egg and needing more, but I just wanna show you what it's like when it's too dry. I 
As you can see, it crumbles and it clearly won't form into any sort of pasta. So it's a clear indication. I need at least one more egg. And then just work it until it can form into a nice moist ball. So there it is, like a big matzo ball. And it's wet enough, it's gotta be wet enough for you to be able to manipulate it. And so that if it's falling apart, it's probably a good sign you need a little bit more egg. It smells good though. This is gonna be good. Now we let this rest and we start to think about the rest of the dish. Now here's the thing. This is best to make in a ricer. However, I can't find the right dye for it. Let me look for it actually. Yeah, no, I can't find it. What you really want are holes that big. So now this is what we use for tomatoes and this is what we use for this, I just, I'm not sure it's gonna work the same way because the ricer pushes it through. So what I'm gonna try and do is kind of make it through the ricer. If you've got the ricer with the big holes, use that. That is the way to do it. There's also something called a passatelle maker. So you can look for that as well. Now we just have to let the dough hydrate a little bit more and rest. As it rests, it'll be easier to work. Now I'm just gonna get the broth into a pot and bring it up to a boil so that we can just form our little passatelle dumplings or whatever you wanna call them and then cook them straight into the broth. And you wanna keep that ball covered so it doesn't dry out. Now if you don't have one of these makers or a ricer, you can always just kind of roll them into balls, mini matzo balls essentially. You could throw these in the water, let them cook, they'll float to the top just like any other pasta dough, and then they're done. But today we're gonna try and do our little shape. Let's see how it works. I'm just gonna take some of the dough, stick it in here. And you see this? You have these beautiful spoonable, almost pastina-like pieces of bread crumb pasta. What a beautiful thing. Now I'm not gonna lie, it's a, it's a real struggle using the food mill to do this. You sort of have to wrestle with it. Once you've had enough of the food mill or it's too difficult for you, you could just roll balls. It's all good. So now here's the two ways you can make the passatelli. You do the ricer, the ricer might push them out a little bit longer than this, but this is fine. It's a mix between spatzel and matzo ball soup. So we got a little like kind of matzo balls there too. You can add those in, you can just roll them like this, you can do them like this, you can bed both of them together, whatever you want. Have fun with it. Let's just get right into it. Now you wanna season the brodo because it's probably unseasoned and start to add the passatelli. You don't want a rolling boil or you might break them up. So keep it at a nice simmer and when they float, they're done. This is straight up a bowl of comfort, which if you made the broth yourself, is literally made of scraps. But the flavor is just there. If you like pastina and brodo, or if you can't find pastina, this is the dish for you. Ever since I learned about this dish, saw how it was made, I became obsessed with it. And I just felt like with these times, and that we just covered breadcrumbs, guys, this is like the perfect dish to be making right now. What a brilliant, brilliant recipe. The Italians really never cease to amaze me. Thank you all for watching. Thank you to Skillshare, our sponsor for today, for supporting this video and the show. Thanks to all my patrons scrolling up on the screen as well. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.